In this video, we're going to look at transcription. This is the process of converting a DNA gene sequence into a messenger RNA molecule. So remember that DNA codes for RNA that codes for protein. So we need our gene sequences so that we can end up with functional proteins. So for example, if we have a gene sequence here for insulin, insulin has about 4,000 and 44 nucleotides in a sequence that will code for a messenger RNA molecule. This is the process of transcription, making the mRNA. When the mRNA molecule then leaves the nucleus, it will go to a ribosome and it will translate that messenger RNA sequence into a protein sequence. And then we can fold that protein so that it is functional and it can be anything such as membrane proteins like sodium potassium pumps or chloride channels, enzymes. We have all kinds of enzymes that help us digest food and have other chemical reactions in our cell like when we make ATP. Antibodies are proteins. We have structural proteins. There are about 100,000 different proteins in our body that have multiple functions. So where does transcription occur? All 46 of our human chromosomes are inside the nucleus of every cell. So transcription has to occur in the nucleus because DNA can't leave the nucleus. Then messenger RNA molecules can leave the nucleus. If we just have a quick refresher of what the cell looks like. Here we have our nucleus. Inside the nucleus is our chromatin, which is our DNA. Chromatin is unfolded chromosomes, so this is during our normal growth phase of the cell cycle that we're going to be transcribing and translating genes into proteins. So transcription has to occur inside the nucleus, and then once the messenger RNA molecule is made, it can move through pores to leave the nucleus and it will go find a ribosome. Ribosomes can either be free in the cytoplasm or on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And then the protein can be processed by the Golgi apparatus, and then it can leave the cell through vesicles. The process of transcription of producing that messenger RNA molecule happens in three basic steps. So number one, we have to have initiation. There is an enzyme called RNA polymerase that has to bind to the DNA and transcribe that gene into an RNA molecule. So how does the polymerase know where to go and at what time? So polymerase has to find a very specific regulatory sequence on the gene called the promoter region. And then we also have transcription factors or molecules that help to regulate the transcription of genes. I'll look at a whole list of regulatory factors in a different video. When the polymerase binds to the promoter, the promoter is upstream of the gene, and then the polymerase knows where to begin transcribing. So then the second stage is elongation. This is when the polymerase is adding the complementary nucleotides. And then the third stage is termination, and this is at the end of the gene where the polymerase knows that it should fall off of the DNA, and that is the end of transcription. RNA polymerase is the enzyme that transcribes genes into messenger RNA molecules. DNA polymerase is the enzyme that replicates DNA. So RNA polymerase has to find a promoter sequence in green here. And then there are transcription factors that will also bind, such as, for example, steroid hormones like testosterone, and those transcription factors help to attract the RNA polymerase to the promoter region. RNA polymerase itself will open up the DNA. So remember when we had DNA replication, we had to use an enzyme called helicase. We do not need helicase for transcription. When we open up the DNA molecule, there are two strands and we call them the sense or the antisense strand. The sense strand is also called the coding strand, and the antisense is also called the template. 
So the anti-sensor, the template strand, this is what the polymerase is looking at, this bottom strand. And when it looks at the sequence, so say we have T, A, G, then the polymerase knows that it has to add the complementary bases. And the complementary bases are always G's combined with C's and A's combined with U's. Remember that in RNA, we don't have thymine, we have uracil. So when we have a DNA molecule, A's and T's combine and C's and G's combine. So when we're replicating DNA, then we make the complementary strands. In transcription, C's and G's combine, but A's will combine with uracil, with U's. So there are no thymines in RNA. Otherwise, everything is exactly the same. Complementary bases are always complementary bases. The other thing that's the same is that strands of DNA have to be anti-parallel, right? So if you have a five prime to three prime end on one strand, the opposite strand has to be in the opposite direction. In transcription, when you have a DNA sequence, the RNA polymerase can still only move in the five prime to three prime direction on the messenger RNA molecule that it's producing. So just like DNA polymerase replicating DNA, polymerase can only go five prime to three prime direction. So when we look at this image, there is a direction. So on the bottom strand, this is the five prime to three prime direction on the DNA and the messenger RNA is being made in the five prime to three prime direction. So the five prime end is the beginning. This is the start end of the messenger RNA molecule. So here we have the three prime end. RNA polymerase is going to keep adding to this hydroxyl group on this side of the nucleotide. So the chain is growing in the five prime to three prime direction. So it's adding to the three prime end. And then you can see this was where we started. And now we're producing this messenger RNA molecule. Nucleotides are continually being added to the three prime end. And as the polymerase keeps moving along, polymerase is moving in this direction along the gene. And this bottom strand is the template strand that the polymerase is looking at to combine the complementary bases. Once transcription has completed, the DNA folds back up and the RNA polymerase falls off. So now let's do a practice. Let's suppose I give you this gene sequence and I tell you that the bottom strand is the template strand or the antisense strand okay, of the gene. How do you make your messenger RNA molecule? Okay, produce your messenger RNA molecule. We still add the complementary bases just like before, just like when we are replicating DNA, except now in our messenger RNA molecule, we have U's instead of T's. Now, which end of that new messenger RNA molecule is the beginning? Which end is going to start going through the ribosome and translating into a protein first? Is it the five prime end or the three prime end? It's the five prime end. Five prime end is always the beginning. Okay, now that we've made our messenger RNA molecule, we're actually not finished and we're actually not quite ready to translate this into a protein. We have to process RNA. In eukaryotic cells, we have little sequences mixed in with our genes called introns and those introns have to be removed. If we look at a prokaryote or bacterial cell, they don't have introns. So when they transcribe their messenger RNA, they can directly start translating that into a protein. So in eukaryotic cells, we have to process RNA. So here's our gene sequence. Here's our promoter sequence. This is our regulatory region where the RNA polymerase is going to first bind so it can find the beginning of the gene. The exons are the parts of the gene that code for our protein sequence. The introns have to be removed.
So when we process RNA, there are three main things that are going to happen. Number one, we're going to add a five prime cap, which is a string of guanines that will be attached to the beginning of the messenger RNA transcript. Before this processing begins, we call this molecule a pre-messenger RNA or a primary messenger RNA. And then once it's mature, then we call it messenger RNA. So number one, we add a five prime cap. Number two, we add a three prime tail or a poly A tail. We add a bunch of adenines to the end of the transcript. The poly A tail helps to protect the messenger RNA from being degraded by enzymes. The longer the tail, the longer this messenger RNA molecule will last in the cell. The five prime cap helps to initiate the translation process at the ribosome. And then number three, we are going to splice out the introns. So removing the introns is called splicing. And then all of the exons are sealed together into this mature messenger RNA molecule. So remember that the five prime end is the beginning. This is where translation will start. This is the, going to enter the ribosome first and exons make up the coding sequence that will code for the protein. Last thing about RNA processing, we can alternatively splice different exons in different genes. So when we look at how many proteins we can produce, we can produce about 100,000 different proteins in our body, but we only have about 25,000 genes. So how do we make that many proteins out of that many genes? So we can have alternative splicing. So this means that sometimes different exons in that sequence will be put together to produce the mature RNA molecule. Also, I just want to point out that most of our DNA is actually introns and not the coding exons. About 90% of our DNA is non-coding and only about 10% of our DNA is exons that will code for proteins.